Hey everyone, it's your host Cybergaming Studios and welcome back to another video. I hope you guys are having a wonderful day. And in this video, we're going to be going on a full-on hands-on guide on how to disable apps that are undisableable on a, a, a flagship phone. If you guys ever use HTC, LG, or Samsung, or any other brand for the matter of fact, you can actually go ahead and download these for yourself. However, in this video, we are only presenting the, a, the Samsung brand, and pretty much this is basically just the same thing as using other, the other applications of the same type for other brands. So just keep sit tight, relax, and enjoy this guide. So if you ever ran a, a flagship phone like an S7 or an S8 or S4, or etc., etc., and you pretty much had no way of rooting and you don't want to root your phone without having to get that 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 trip where it puts your device status from official to custom this is a great method to do that without having to modify physically modify your phone to get root or anything like that it's pretty much easy and i pretty much have done it and i had no problem with it problems with it so it may it, it may suffer a little bit with older devices as i tested on an older device which is an s4 but you probably will have to go into some kind of command on the computer to be able to get it working and give it ownership but beyond that i cannot explain to you about ownership because personally i don't know anything about that and i've never used an application that requires it so it's pretty much still new to me so in this guide it's going to be used for the newer models like such as s7 s6 and beyond that and it's pretty much for the usually mostly new models that has a new security patch. So it's pretty much just going to be simple as that. Just keep in mind that I've tried this on my S7 and I had no issues with it. I have really had no crashes or anything. And if you experience a crash, you can send feedback to the developer and the developer can actually improve, improve that feature. So just keep in mind that... This is can be dangerous if you don't know what you're doing, and specifically some features will require you to root, but in most cases you 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 uh, can install applications un uninstall applications anyways. This is only a disabling app, and it's called a Package Disabler Pro. And there are different three different there's different types of of this package, such as as. Uh, um, package disabled, um, such as package disabled for Samsung, ACC, and LG. Then you, you have the other other brands um, like you can use, and they're all going to be on the Google Play Store, so you can all download them. But however, the price for these are three forty five, three dollars and forty five cents. They cost real money, yes, to get them. They're not free, and I can't tell you guys where exactly to get them if you want them for free. So the Play Store actually downloads the appropriate version for your device model. So just keep that in mind. But either way, it's all it's it's, it's a very good application, and I had no problems with it. So, what are the benefits of using this application, and what could be what what could be possibly safe about this? Now, the benefits for this application is that it does just it does do what it says on the Play Store app, and there are some people that have negativity for this. But you're just gonna have to see the reviews for it. But I pretty much like this application. But the benefits for this application is basically. If an app is, is, is unable to be turned off or disabled because Samsung or ACC prevents the, the user to do these kind of things because they want you to use these features, they want you to be enticed to use these features, and you really don't, you have no use for them. So this application basically force disables it um, in a secure way because this is where the device administration comes in. Before you actually launch the app, the app will ask you to set that you need to set device administration. If you don't do it, the app will close and you can't use it until you give that permission. And to be honest, a lot of people will be skeptical about this because they know that having a, an app that uses device administration can do certain things that a typical you know app couldn't do so if a typical app that doesn't have device administration they can't go ahead and modify any apps or anything at all unless they're given that specific permission or or permission to allow the, the app to modify their device in a way where it could affect the device significantly significantly where it could break the device or basically do nothing at all and the safe device would be just act as normal just with newer changes to the device this is mostly what we call a device administration it basically just what this is it just gives you it gives the application administration over your device so they don't have to 
to go through access to do these things and it's pretty pretty cool there are some features that I do think that requires root, but it just wouldn't make no sense if you're if you're using this in the first place either way. But this is mostly based on for devices who or people who really don't use applications and they want to save up RAM, they want to save up storage, and they want to save up some space and some um, tasks in the running in the background so their phone doesn't look, um, die by die so fast and they don't really and they don't um, have to worry about all that nonsense so it's pretty much simple as that so let's get started with this with this uh, with this tutorial and I will see you guys when we get there all right now we're in the home menu. In order to find to specifically find the application, what you need to do is go into the Google Play Store and what you will need to do is find a package disabler. There is there is gonna be an application called just like this. There are many of them that, that can give you some, some that are can do certain things, but pretty much you wanna look for this developer. Police developer is the one I'm using. There is OEM developer as well. Well, I think they're pretty much the same thing. The Package Disabler Pro Plus for Samsung devices is the one you're going to be using when you need a Samsung device. If you're using one for LG, I, there's one right here. But I don't not cannot tell you guys whether if there is other other ones for other devices. I do know that I've seen I've probably seen one for HTC, but it is somewhere, and you're going to have to find one if if possible. But pretty much, this is pretty much the simple app. Once you actually go ahead and you go and uh, purchase this application, it's not going to have no ads. But once you pay for it, you'll have a certain amount of time before you can refund it if you do not like it or it doesn't work to you for you. So just keep that in mind. The latest version is 12 point, I believe 12.8. And that's, I think that's the latest version of, of this app so far. Um, so I already left my review. I use actually my, my second account to purchase these apps because my main account is locked for some reason. So I can't make any purchase on my main account. So um, when you actually purchase this, it's going to install. The first thing you need to do is you're going to need to go and enable settings. You can do this pretty much prematurely and you can pretty much go into security. You can go into uh, into other security settings if depending on how your phone's set up. And you're going to go into the, the option called device administration, device admin apps. Once you click it, it's going to have show an option called Package Disabler Pro, you're going to need to enable that. This gives the application the ability to go ahead and install, uh, install, but basically modify certain things of the device without harming your data or anything like that. Just keep in mind, this doesn't harm your personal data. This just it, all this just does is disables applications you don't want to do to use. So once you have that done, all you need to do is run it. It's going to go through the process. When you go through the first time process, it's going to tell you give you maybe give you an error saying re-entry, blah 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 blah. Just click re-entry and keep doing it. If it keeps persisting and nothing happens even after that then this means that either your application isn't supported or nothing's really gonna happen so the first thing if it does go through and you'll see this once you, once you actually click re-entry and if it just goes to this then you're pretty much all set to go the, th the thing you need to know about this is that you don't want to disable applications that are necessary for Android to run because once you disable them it can destroy your phone and that's something we don't want that to happen because once you destroy your phone you can't fix it I think a factory reset could fix it but it's best to flash so just ensure that you pay attention to what apps you are um, you're disabling if you want to go and physically know what applications are good to disable or remove look about on XDA or Google and they'll give you a full list of your device of what can you disable or uninstall safely without having to damage your phone. Because disabling an application is there are, are, is is an important crucial part because you never know if that if the system requires that system for it to run. Now I've restarted this phone multiple times with a disabled disabled applications, as you can see here. And it pretty much, they're all disabled, and the actually the phone the phone works very pretty much simple. So, say for example, you want to disable a lot of bloatware. 
What you could do is that in this application, there is a three dot menu. You can go on the top right or in the, or in the bottom, depending on where it's at, and you can click disable all bloatware. What this will do is that if there isn't no selection, selection or it won't let you select it, what you could do is you can click disable all bloatware, and this what would do is that it has an automated system that detect whether what applications are safe to disable, and it will basically automatically disable it for you. But it will not disable applications that are required or it will not also disable applications that are installed by the user. This is nothing that it will not affect any applications that you install from the Google Play Store. And this will not affect applications within the system that the system really needs to in order to operate fully, um, fully, fully very well, very, very well. So and pretty much you can see here that I have a lot of applications checkmark and whatever is checkmarked is already disabled. So here how this works is basically whenever you wanted to disable something, all you gotta do is is checkmark one of the uh, one of the apps. And once you actually select the option that you want to disable, you might want to go through the whole, whole list and see what you disable. I usually like to disable, like for Samsung, I need the Samsung apps. Um, and I'm going to disable this one because I really don't need this one. And I don't really need this one. I, I, I don't know how I missed miss that. But you get my point. So... Once you actually select the ones you want to disable, go around the list and see what you want to disable. There are many, 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 many applications with manufactured these days that do update and install applications that are preloaded onto phones, and this can cause a big problem like battery drainage, you know, RAM hogging, and pretty much storage space hogging. So you don't want them to be running in the background or even specifically show up in the home menu because they can be annoying when you accidentally click them. And and you're like, God damn it, I just closed that. You know, you don't you don't want that. So just make sure that you, you pay attention to what apps you're actually deleting, or not deleting, but disabling, and you'll be all happening dandy. Just keep in mind, this app will not in uninstall them. They will not. This what this basically just does is force disables them and overrides the, the, the Android manifest.xml in the application to forcefully disable them. This means that you can re-enable them if you want to and they'll, they'll work just fine, but they will just forcefully disable them even if the app doesn't have the manifest in the manifest says the, or in, on the phone device that allows them to be disabled. Once, they, once you actually select them, all you have to do is just go onto the top three bar and click Disable All Bloatware. Do not worry if you already have apps disabled because they won't really be affected as much. But just make sure that you read this. Are you sure? Recommended to take backup before using this feature. This is very important if you're very scared of if anything happens, you can re you can restore it. But if your phone is basically bricked and you can you 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 basically disable something you're not supposed to, and it requires to for it to boot, then this is going to be pointless. But since we already know all the applications that can be uh, can be disabled. We're going to click OK. It's going to say progressing. And it's going to say, please wait. You're going to see a bloatware background. Don't worry about that. It's going to take a few moments for this to happen. Once it does, just keep in mind, once you disable it, you can re-enable it. But it's going to tell you how much packages has been disabled. So this is a confirmation saying you got it right. So once you guys go back into disabled, you should see any other applications such as we got the Spanish language pack and the English language pack disabled. And we have other applications disabled as well. And this will show you, tell you that this is, um, they're all disabled. A known fact. Do not, whatever you do, do not click the uninstall button over down here. What this does is basically just uninstalls the app. And you can't uninstall the app if you're planning to unless you, you deactivate the administrative um, settings in administration So because you don't want it to do that. Just keep in mind that if you do want to restore your apps before your factory set, just go ahead and undisable them and then factory reset. And then if you want to reset, you want to do it again, you can definitely do it. It's only 345, 345 or 349 uh, on the Google Play Store. And it's a pretty much useful app. I can't really tell you guys either where to get them. So I, I, and I can't give it for free. This is not my application. So I will leave a direct link to this application for the LG and the Samsung. And if you, if you need to, if you need, um, want a link for a specific device or brand, 
I will find it for you. And if I can't find it, then I will let you know in the comment section below. So other than that, once you actually have um, disabled all blowware and you want to enable all of them, again, you can just click enable all. I'm not really going to do that because I've already disabled apps that I don't really use and I don't need. So I, I'm not going to click that. You can also choose startup apps, set up as installed, scan for dangerous apps, scan for suspicious apps. You can use apps using large heap, apps using with native libs, and uninstall, which you shouldn't click because it's going to screw up your disabled apps. Because I've retried it and it disabled apps, everything starts showing up in the menu and the, in the home, home menu. And once you actually do it again and you disable them and, re and then you and you apply it, they may show up in the home in the home screen. So all you have to do is just reboot your phone and you should be should be fine. Um, but other than that, that's pretty much it. You can just press home and once you're actually once you actually finish and you have it done, you don't have to necessarily reboot. They will automatically disappear from the home. If they don't disappear, just reboot your device and they will be gone. So this is how basically the ICE application works, and it's pretty much simple as I can I can put it. And I haven't had any problems with the Galaxy S on it with it on the Galaxy S7, but who knows? All devices work differently. If you have any questions regarding this, then let me know in the comment section below. But if you guys did enjoy this video, be sure to start, smack that like button and subscribe. If you're a brand new subscriber, I would love it if you you'd hit that notification bell icon so you guys never miss a video. And if you guys don't get a video, let me know in the comment section below if you don't get a notification as I can just post the link and link the video to my community tab. And most of you will probably see it and some of you may. It all really depends. But other than that, thank you guys for watching and I hope you guys thought this video was useful. And I will see, uh, thanks guys, and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.